But it is pulling to start the first game of the day. Let's see if he can keep his win streak alive. And of course, this is where in the semi final, Piotta went on to win five games in a row to crush David Webb and to get to the final. So Paul's drawn a relatively good starting rack, not bonusy, not like Piotta's anyway. I mean, that has bonuses on it, I think even in my sleep state. Like, I see bacon, and it's making me hungry. There are other fives, but he's going to play a five-letter word here. I, he may choose between banjo and Cajun. I'm guessing he'll go for... I, I would say he'd go for banjo, but... Because Banjo doesn't leave vowels next to the double letter squares. Um, yeah, he, I'm sure he'd pick one of the fives that doesn't leave the O next to one of those squares. And the only two are Banco and Banjo. Now, I, I, don't, I, I don't know which letters are more preferred together, but... I think Paul is going to have to leave two clunky consonants regardless here. Because... Because it's just... Ew. Okay, so he's going for Cajun. Very cool. Cajun. Cajun. And... Maybe... Maybe, maybe he's trying to be a bit more aggressive. You know, put a vowel there. Maybe he just hasn't seen banjo or banco. I know, I'm pretty sure he's all bank. But um, but yeah, it all this means is that Piotr looking at that a for a double double and it doesn't exist. But there are a couple of sevens. One of them I would probably describe myself as, and that's a ladette. Um, ladette is more of a a term that you use for a girl that can act quite laddish, but not like laddish, laddish. Like likes guy things is one of the guys really different from a dudette. A dudette is just a female dude. And a dude being a, you know, a good person in that sense. Not a dude as in the guy. But there are, like, like every single word ends in, every single bonus ends in T-E. So you've got E double T-E, E-T-E, and then an A-T-E ending. I mean, I know Piotr knows these words. Alet, athlete, galette, layette, palette, and peltate. He's so probably looking at the N as well, seeing if he can reach across to the triple. Because if he can't see a double double, the next choice is to look toward the triple. And I find that when N's are the tile that you need to start with or end with, they're really hard to reach the triple. Um, those kind of words are just so hard. And it looks like Piotr's seen the only one that reaches to the triple. Nettable. That nets him a good score. And the lead again. Maybe he's going to do to pull what he kept doing most of yesterday. And that's... Uh, as soon as Paul has the lead, he's just going to snatch it off him. Oh, and he's drawn the other blank. How exciting for him. All that hype.
So Paul's drawn a nice rack, apart from the duplicate A's, the B and the W. So he'll be looking to play those off, um, if possible. Immediately, my mind is turning to the J and the area around the J. Um, it looks quite appealing as a scoring spot and um, you should always look for the scoring spot. Just scan the board for where you can score. Uh, obviously, the double-double is a good scoring opportunity. But uh, considering you have the W and the B, you want to try and play around the J and that, that kind of area because it just looks so promising. Um, I'm trying to think of something that goes there because you want to put the B or the W there. So you want to play like a four-letter word, but the problem is that J now becomes... You know, so you play J-A... And then you you're leaving that triple so ex, that triple letter square so exposed, and it's like if your opponent has the last W that you don't see, or G's or M's or K or Y's, it's just so risky that you're behind already, and you might not want to risk your opponent getting an easy forty points. But it's it's what to do if you don't play in that spot and I mean I guess it's using one of the T's or playing something like Nawab through the A or Buana Buana is kind of good as well playing Buana onto an A I mean that gets rid of all, almost all the clunky letters that are on your rack and you do want to get rid of the clunky letters because they're the ones that are stopping you from bonusing best Not sure whether Paul has spotted this, but he needs a V for his bonus. And there's no V, so there's no bonus. He's lining up the letters wand, maybe dawn, wet, wet. Hmm. I wonder where he plans on putting them. Maybe. No, that makes EW. That doesn't sound good. It, it's a really tough board at this point because the only hot spots you really want to take are like the horrible ones. And yeah, Wayne. Wayne does what I was talking about with taking, you know, that's probably the highest scoring spot that he can actually access. Um, by playing the W. Um, where he has, he's trying to limit access to that triple word squat, and I don't think it's going to work because A's and E's are really common. And look, Piotr has an A, and, and an N goes there as well. I mean, all this crazy stuff. It's an easy 40 points right there. Just play the word day or something. Might have to be day or or the NY. NY is even better because it leaves uh, it leaves the vowel and and it's what you what Piotr really wants to do and that he wants to make sure that he has a balanced rack to be able to get rid of the next turn. Ball has lined up his orphan bonus Bargies. Well, one of his orphan bonuses. There are three of them. He may be slightly annoyed because his double-double was blocked. Absturge. But nope, he's going for the... The flappy bird. The bog geese. Or the flappy birds. So it's a geese. So now Paul takes a slight lead and look at Piotr's rack. It's it's so nice. It's so nice. 
that's all I want to say about it. It's nice. Oh, you know what it is? It's adequate. You could play adequate through the A, but no. Nice. Piotr is going for that massive school. I mean massive. That's like... That's like 100 points just with the Q itself. That must be like 120... 124... Ouch. That's a lot of points. And Piotr has done to Paul what he was doing all of yesterday. That's stealing back the lead with a plum. At least I hope that's the right word to use. In my tired state, I have no idea which words are coming out my mouth anymore. So immediately I'm looking at that triple with Paul's rack. You know, you always want to try and look to see what you could do with the best scoring hotspot in the world. And I cannot see anything beyond like L-O. those consonants and the vowels just don't go that well together so I think Paul may have to leave it alone unless he decides to play something like Glover or Grovel or Groover or just something through the E of Liquator to try and block or limit the triples somewhat um the advantage of playing through that E is that it just gets rid of a ton of tiles that he doesn't want. You know, he's not having to deal with these tiles later, he can just deal with them now. I'm not sure what he's lining up, but it must be something. But, um, but now Paul is a bonus behind because... Piotr got a lot of points off, off of like weighted. He um he really needs to try and get to good racks a lot quicker. He's playing Orville. What happened to Keith Harris? We've got Orville. Oh, uh, I miss Keith Harris. Now Orville is an orphan duck. But anyway, what Awful does is open out a double-double, which may be how Paul's thinking I need to get back in this game and how I'm going to distract Piotr from the nine-timer that's open. But Piotr is sat there with the Zed and he's lying up that Himalayan cow yak thing and he's so ready to plonk it down for 50 points. There we go. He's, he's made another yak. And now Paul is even further behind. Of course, there were other options to play the Z there, but none that also duplicated the Ds and none that didn't leave the O not below the triple letter square, which is kind of what you want to avoid when there are still A's on the scene. Like, that would be an easy 30, 40 points right there. So, on one hand, Paul drew an S. On the other hand, he didn't draw a bonus. He needs a floating V again, but that's not going to happen. So really he's looking to to play some tiles to score some points. He needs to score 30 points here. Uh, whether that's possible, I have no idea. Um, the only floaters that are really available are the B and the A of Bargies, the A and maybe the B of Netable. I don't think that B is really useful though. And the E and the D of Liquated. You can fit a seven letter word under Orville. Um, 
but it's it's more of a face value one. It will get 70 points, but it's a face value one. And you'll still be 40 points behind. So he either needs to outscore Piotta going into the late part of the middle of the game, or he needs to really find some bonuses somewhere. And the thing is, if he takes the triple here um, through the D, he's really limiting himself. Uh, he's going to kill off the floaters, basically. Uh, he needs to burn the Fs to, to really use that triple, and I'm not sure he would really want to do that, even though there are two Fs left. But 39 points may be too much to take down, or to turn down, even. I mean, it's it's around 30 points for playing high there, which leaves us slightly better versus something like Hods. Um, but there, I'm not seeing many other opportunities to score well. Um, he may look at blowing something open super aggressive and playing Orgia at the top um, so opening up the top side of the board so that all kind of split up from the bottom half of the board as well even though it's quite aggressive as a move two triples will now be open well three really but two triple lanes will be open and the rack leave is pretty good as well, HIS. All he's got to do then is really hope for a decent pickup on hope he can play either at the top or the bottom. But by opening up the triple, he's opening himself up to falling even further behind. And uh, he's probably worried about that. If he thinks about that. So he is opening up the top part of the board. He's played Goris or Goris. Now that scores more points than Orgias. Um, or Orgia. Um, but it scores less than something like High would have done, but it does open up two more useful floaters than the B and the A. Does limit floaters or take them away but it opens up more useful photos for him. And his rack is saying hello to me. Hi, Paul's rack. Sorry. I'm trying to mark it. I don't think it's working. Um, it's really nice to look at some synergy. And he plays wild pretty quickly. Um, so it gets rid of a lot of stuff he doesn't like. Um, he, I think he chose wild over wald because the X is still un and he also needs to switch this. Stop him scoring, you just create less hot spots. And, um, and yeah, he just created, or uncreated, or refused to create a hot spot. Oh, come on, this is still hype. It's a shame that O is just slightly in the wrong place because he had a bonus of Thio. Thio. Then. Who do you want to play that? Thio. Then. It's a heterocyclic liquid from coal tar that resembles benzene and is chiefly used in organic synthesis. I love benzene. It's my favourite shape. Make of that what you will. So 
So Piotr's still a bone off the head. Maybe kind of annoyed that that Paul just scored fifty points because it has pulled him to within the bonus now. Even though Piotr has a turn in hand. I'm no seven. I'm sure he's aware that height has opened another lane. No, neither of Piotr's eights are available, but he is probably looking to take the lower triple here. And the reason it's not been taken is just because there's you know, both players have not had ease, and to use that triple properly, you really need to have an E on your rack. Because if you don't have an E, you have to use an S or a Y, and players have neither, and the score just wasn't there. So sometimes that happens in a game where triples just stay open for because there there's kind of nothing you can either do with them. And that, that happens in the top pitch. That kind of depends on how players in lower divisions think they can take triples immediately and that's not always the best way to think about them. So Piotr takes the, the triple with Limo. I may have preferred Crockle's suggestion of Malted um, going horizontally onto the D just because you know, it creates the same kind of bonus lane as Height does, one ending in a vowel. And they also plays six tiles versus three. You're not worried about drawing something like the Q, you're not worried about you know, your hotspot creation. You're just playing tiles, and Piotr needs to win a game, really. Paul quickly plays Frypan. Out of the Frypan, and it's to the fire. No, that doesn't have the same ring to it. Oh. Piotr did draw the X, though. Which is quite good. I'm looking at Paul's rack now and I'm looking at beside Bargies and I was like, maybe you should have kept the Y to try and make something fit beside Bargies. Because that is, that is quite a great scoring hotspot and it's, it's basically stayed open the whole game because everyone had better moves. So, it's something to remember, that that hotspot is there, and that the Y was the thing that was going to get you 50, maybe even 60 points from it. You ought to maximise X with luck. Yep, that has just taken it all. One with the... All's rack is ugly. It's got plenty letters, and it's not very good. Yeah, it's not very good. Uh, I'm sure if the triple had stayed open in the top left, Paul would play something like Frank here. Um, it would have blocked things up, but he gets rid of everything he needs to get rid of. Um, he really needs to get rid of two of the CF and P. And it's really hard. Because there's just not a lot available. I mean, the best thing you could probably do is uncape off of the U of Lux in terms of achieving that object objective. And even then, that's so aggressive and open. But it may be something he'll need to consider because he leaves FN. And while that leave is terrible, I challenge him to do much better.
Yeah, I'm going to leave you thinking of this one up to Paul. I mean, he's the one that's wide awake, and I'm, like, half asleep. It's possible he can choose to buy something like meh here, and the wild just for the point. But that's just way too aggressive. Yeah, too. I'll just playing uncap instead. Oh yeah, that's a win. That's, that's better. It's a bit hard to play a bonus um, alongside uncap though. It will only be for case of or if you're going to play it along the left hand side you need one of those O's or those U's. And, uh, Piotta has some of them. And uh, he's lined up moose. Just so I can say there's a moose loose a boot. Not really. My dad says that a lot. But Moose gets the points, and it's it's kind of just important for Piotta to take out those hot spots and keep scoring points. And the spot next to the bar, you it's continually kind of losing its valves that, that make it great. Um, hopefully someone will actually see that at some point. Maybe they've seen it already, who knows. Paul looks decidedly vowel heavy. I mean, I'm seeing like six, seven consonants out of 18 tiles. That's a bit ugly. Paul's rag is still full of clunky consonants. Uh, he's not getting anywhere with a bonus fast. And ideally he wants to get rid of the V and the F with something like 5. I might be tempted to play that underneath wild making we just because the V is such a blocker that you're not gonna take the triple at all and the triple that's directly underneath the what would be the V and then to get to the other triple you need a six or seven letter word and you're keeping the other bonus lanes open as well. It's, it's completely up to chance whether that bonus happens at that point. But 5 is, for me, a play that does what you need it to do. You know, it gets rid of the tiles you want to get rid of. It scores something. You know, 23 points is nothing to kind of sniff at. Especially, like, Paul is over 140 points behind, or about 140 points behind. And, you know, he needs to open up something and hope, like, he gets the K on the, you know, he needs, like, a 90-point bonus and he needs to open up a triple to really get there. And kind of hope that Piotta just has, like, the clunk that he does have so that, you know, he's not going to get a bonus back or something. Because, I mean, you know he's just burnt the S, so you can't infer from Moose that he has the last S or not, so you know it could still be out there. Somewhere. Let's play F. Maybe he's seen something I haven't. Um, I know F plays the tiles as well, which is kind of what you want to do, but I do like five. Maybe I'd convince myself that a move is good without it being good. Which static player abuses, or which I can't complain with. I mean, static player. So if Paul gets rid of a clunky consonant, he draws a clunky consonant. That's it. Um, I can't imagine here Shotter not taking that triple somehow. Um, the rack isn't the most friendliest rack in the world. He needs to end his word in an E or a T. Try not to create another lane, so he may do something. It's quite hard to see what to do with, with this rack, because there are just so many routes. Like, 
there might there's not even a fallout word that he can play under there. So yeah, he's I think he's looking at doing a away. Yes, I do know that how A U E is pronounced it. It's away. It's a Hawaiian word. For like for something good. I think like awesome or something. Yeah, this is where Pokemon is so handy. I know how to pronounce words like away. It's an interjection. Which explains why it doesn't take an S. Away! It used in Polynesia to express an emotional reaction such as sorrow, surprise, or affection. So not Hawaii. Oh yeah, Pokemon Go. Small, no, not Pokemon Go. Pokemon Sun and Moon was more based off of. No, I think it was more based off Hawaii, Polynesia. But anyway, it's a word that means something. And now there are sick tails in the bag. Paul can't get back to back bonuses and he needs something big or the game is lost and the game is more than likely lost anyway. Especially considering his current rack. Um, what Away did do was open up an S ending bingo lane in Swee. Which is always good if you've got an S. But I mean consider the pool, the pool from both players point of view and it's quite disgusting there are lots of vowels not so many consonants and the consonants that are there are big crap of course Paul could still be sat here with retains theoretically he isn't though but theoretically he could be because there's only six left Paul can't change either so he has to play some tiles and his racks not good look as good as he wants it to look. I don't know what to play. It's, it's really hard because you want to get rid of one of VKB. Like I keep talking about getting rid of your clunky consonants and they do kind of stop you playing bonuses like you can tell now if he had like one point consonants he'd probably have a bonus here if he needed an L R T he'd have a bonus you know even a two or a three pointer cut can be more likely you can have bonuses with, with the higher consonants but in theory higher scoring tiles are harder to play that's why they're worth more points and you know they won't really work too well together usually. So you try to find somewhere ideally for K and B, maybe even B and K, because the V is probably a tiny bit more flexible than the B, but you've got to score some points, and you've got to keep the bonus lines open. Maybe, just maybe, which I, I don't think is very likely, but it would be nice if Paul kind of just put the K down, making K-O-N next to Cajun. Like, he could like hope for that final unseen O, which isn't going to happen, but, you know, bovines would fit nicely down there. There are better things to fish for, but the idea is that you, you can create another opening. Maybe, you know, actually fish and not fish, maybe draw a bonus. But unfortunately, fishing here, you know, you're going to need something better than the six tiles. Hey, no sky. For me, that all but means Paul's given up. Um, 
I mean, he's not going to win. He's just burnt his S, killed off a lane, killed off two technically because he can't use the Swee hook anymore. And even though he's left one in the pack, because I'm sure there are bonuses still available from the unseen, um, yeah, it's, it's not very full of. No, it's old. So Piotr is probably looking at what's left and is like not happy with it. Because there are still bonuses possible through the S. And even though there are other sevens possible there, he can't block everything. Probably could if you played directly through the F's though. Maybe. He played too quickly for me to think about it. But maybe playing uh, like Tories through the S or something. Because um, that would have blocked things like anti bug or tabooing that come down next to uncap. Uh, it really doesn't matter though. He's won the game anyway. But, um. You know, there was another lane available, and it just so happens that Paul had to be in. and drew the wrong tiles to make something happen. A bit too late to make something happen, but maybe make something happen. He doesn't have a bonus though. Like, it. You know, leaving, what was it, B, N? He needed to make sure he left the R in the bag to, to have the playable bonus. And he didn't, he drew it. So, it looks like the first game of the day will be Piotr's. And he will take a 6-5 lead. <laughs> Leaning on a pillow with a headset is not the best thing in the world. It's not easy to see her. Paul is still thinking of his move. It looks like he's going to give up. I give up, i.e. score some points, but not enough that it's going to make him win. Um, yeah, he found that hotspot that I kept referencing earlier. Not super useful as a hotspot, but... Man bag. I love that. It's like a handbag, but it's a man bag. You know, like a bag for a man, because you know men don't carry bags; they carry like rucksacks all the time. They never carry like the equivalent of a handbag because they're like they're men. Well, ours is the same equity points so, as statically, so I guess as a two, it's equal. Paul must be low on time because he's lined up ticking upside down. Yes. Oh no. My, my, I don't know. Um, I, I've got to find what Piotr played because I completely missed that. Oh, he played Q. Uh, and then. Paul played Mating at 18. And. Three, three. 